Good morning, guys. This is Dr. Corey from The Diet Doc, and we are on episode two of the Motivational Mastery series. So just a reminder, every Monday I will be here and you guys can tune in. We're going to take a deep dive into a client issue, problem, something that they're navigating. We may even get to something that I am working through in my own life that I think will be relatable to you guys. Uh, we'll tease it apart and we'll look at different ways of how we can manage it, different ways of perceiving the situation and then integrating it uh, in a more functional way in our lives. So I get emails every day with really juicy real life uh, topics coming up and I, and I wanted to find a way to share it with you guys. So this is episode two and uh, here's the issue this time. We have a client and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read their email to you, okay? She said to me, and this is something that comes up often and probably is something that you have thought to yourself <laughs> repeatedly as well. Do I have to weigh in every day? She capitalized have to. She said, the scale makes me crazy. I know our bodies fluctuate. I know that weight loss is not linear. I know it is the consistency of tracking macros that will make the difference and the end, but I just can't shake it. I can't get past the anxiety and the anger it gives me when I'm on point one day with everything and then I don't see the scale go down the following day. Or worse, she said, see it creep up. It sends me into a downward spiral that I can't get myself out of, she said. Voices start saying to me things like, what the hell was all that hard work worth? You passed up the pizza, you had salad instead, and now look at what the scale says. The scale went up, it's not fair, go get a burger and fries and some Ben and Jerry's on your way home. So she's got these voices in her head uh, that are telling her to just screw it, right? And she said it happens every time. Every time she sees the scale go up because she's been on point, this is what goes on in her mind. I can't get past it, she said again. So, you know, as I was thinking through my response to her, I was, it was intense to me it was like wow uh, there is a lot of energy being given to the thoughts obviously that are scrolling through her mind i suggested to her that if she knows all of these things if she knows that her body weight is going to fluctuate up and down um, if she knows that weight loss and fat loss is not linear that it's really going to be a a downward trend we're looking for but it's not going to be a straight line it's going to look like this right that she shift the expectation from it going down every day to that it's going to fluctuate i'm going to stand on the scale and it may go up and or it may go down let's see what happens and that's kind of one of my number one mantras in life, guys, is let's see what happens. Let's just be curious instead of standing on it and thinking it has to go one way or the other. So the second thing I recommended is that she not give so much power to her thoughts. And this is something that we addressed a little bit in motivational mastery number one, right? So we have to expect again that we're going to have thoughts, thousands of them all day long. Some of them are going to snag us, and most of them are not. Um, in this case, she's been having those same thoughts for so long, it's not even surprising that she continues to have them. She's reinforced those thoughts over and over again. So instead of believing them, I said, and because they happen every time, instead of believing them or getting angry and caught up in them or being pissed at you know our mind for even having the thoughts in the first place we have to be thinking okay well you know what i've had these thoughts a million times before it kind of makes sense that now i'm having them again right and um going into that sort of an expectation instead uh 
The other thing we can do is we can learn to talk to our thoughts or not even necessarily engage them in a negative way, but just to think, huh, that's an interesting thought. Okay, it makes sense that, that you're showing up here, buddy. Um, you've been thinking you're protecting me for a really long time, but I don't necessarily need you anymore. So we can do those kinds of things too, and it's, it takes the edge off of something that has a really negative valence, typically. Um, so the scale I said to her does not need to make you crazy, and the thoughts don't make you crazy either. You're believing the thoughts, except the thoughts are not the truth. Thoughts often lie. Thoughts are just words. They're strings of words flowing across the, the marquees of our minds, I like to say. So, you know, in a situation like that where she's been trying really, really hard and putting a lot of effort into something, it can feel like a threat then to her when she sees the scale go up a little bit. And when we, when we perceive a threat, guess what happens? The primitive part of our brain, the animal oldest part of our brain kind of perks up and it's like, oh gosh, we're in threat mode here. Like we have to do something to, to fix this situation, right? Except it, there's no real threat, okay? The scale upticked and there's a very physiological reason why that would happen. Um, but every time she gives a thought like that attention, she's creating that negative habit. Again, she's reinforcing it. So in that case, she can say, okay, well, I know I have a new part of my brain called the prefrontal cortex. <laughs> and that is the part of the brain that's designed to be logical and logistical and problem solving. So I told her, no, you don't have to weigh in every day. No, that, that's not a, a black and white thing. You don't have to, but being scared of the scale and being scared of the thoughts that you're going to have when they pop up in your mind gives something a lot more power than it deserves and creates, again, that very negative habit. So here's the message, guys. Fear is an assumption of the worst possible consequences. What if you use that fear, that feeling in your body, I don't like this, or the thoughts of, I can't stand this, oh my God, I had that thought again, what's wrong with me? What if you use those thoughts as impetus, as motivation to practice not necessarily giving that power away anymore, okay? And ask yourself this, how often have you really let fear stop you from taking an action that really in reality can only have positive consequences attached to it. So in this case, the positive consequences of her weighing herself are that she gets to acquire data, okay? She gets to acquire information needed to understand her body and the non-linear process of weight loss. In addition, she gets to understand all of the different factors that can affect weight fluctuations, okay? like how much water you've been drinking or not drinking, how much sleep, sleep you've gotten, how much stress you're under, psychologically and physically just from the intensity of your workouts. So weight loss and weight management does necessitate weighing, but the scale is a tool and the weight you see on the scale is a tool. And I'm encouraging you guys to use the fear that you're experiencing now and the thoughts that you have about weight and the scale as a tool. All right, guys, enjoy your Monday. I will see you next week.